This is the story of two ordinary families in a race to help save the planet. We're challenging them to change their habits. With the help of energy experts and their own personal coaches, each family is ready to go green. At the end of the three-month competition, the winning family will drive away in a brand new electric car. The families are learning to go green, but can they change their lifestyles without giving up or cracking under the pressure? Find out next on The Greenest House. As the competition enters the home stretch, and with the family-to-family -family challenges all tied up, the coaches are doing their best to keep their teams kicking into the final lap, despite some concerns. These can actually go into Food Plus too. Aluminum foil also, you can recycle that. I think they're doing really well. I mean, they've, they've had a lot to process. I haven't had them say, oh, you know, I don't really think we can do that, or wow, that seems too hard, or I'm just, we're not doing well at this. Every challenge they've been given, they've completely committed to. I think just the basic sorting of waste is something that they, they, they really need to work on. This is a week of our garbage. It's, it's all packaging. Right, it is. It's all packaging. They did really well in the waste challenge. I was a little surprised at Todd's bag. Um, he had interesting things <laughs> for a week of waste in his bag. This is a plastic bag with some surgical tubing and duct tape that I'm using to build some stretch cords for my swimmers. You know, I feel like it's, it's up to me to try and help them get there as much as I can, but if there are some behaviors that they that they don't want to change or that they I guess you know don't don't feel like they can change then that's what the challenge is about if the other family does better they do better if the Edisons come in second it's it's hard for me to even get my mind around I don't think about losing because it's not gonna happen I mean that's just a ridiculous thought if it happens which I can't imagine that well but if it happens that they get second place then I think they're still winners both teams are neck and neck in the transportation portion of the competition. So close that every little bit counts. Team Edison's special efforts getting to the Community Green event have not gone unnoticed. And that pays off in unexpected dividends. We walked! Team Edison walked. Thank you very much. We walked. Well, we walked from, from Todd and Carrie's house. Because you did that, you get to drive <gasps> the electric car Woo! for two days. <gasps> wow. Sweet! Yeah. So awesome job. That's yeah, really cool. that's awesome. That's great. So Todd and Carrie get to experience what life might be like with an electric car. It's been great. Yeah, we've been driving it like crazy. And I just love it. I think it's, I think it's really cute. And I think it's super effective. It's a smooth ride. And it's been a lot of fun. I know that I'm not having a huge impact when I drive it. So it makes me just feel better. And while Team Edison gets to experience the electric vehicle lifestyle, Nick is doing his part to explore alternative transportation, too. I could cut down on a lot of stuff. I could probably take the bus to school. <laughs> and over on the other side of town, Jay Lynn is coming back from a class in Seattle on the train. Amtrak's routes are somewhat limited in the Pacific Northwest, but it can be a great option for travel between Vancouver, BC, Seattle, and Portland. The train requires a little bit of planning and flexibility, but leaving the stress of the road behind can be a relaxing ride. When the competition first started, we created a baseline for both houses with a whole home energy audit. And now, Robert Stockman from Pinnacle Inspection returns to give us the lowdown on the final air sealing numbers. The average American duct system leaks up to 40% of a home's heating and cooling energy. Sealing your ducts can save well over $300 a year and prevent unhealthy air quality issues. Previous test showed us around 4,700. Wow. That's incredible. And you did it all yourself? Yes. Yeah. That's great. Good job. We rocked out the energy audit. Todd got in there and just made it all happen. A $500 reduction in your energy bill. It seems to have paid off. Um, and really, what, you know, it didn't cost much money to do it. 
As the competition wraps up, there's still one more challenge in store for the teams. One that will put to the test everything they've learned so far. Mission, create a dinner with the least possible impacts. So coaches, we're gathered here to talk about the upcoming put your money where your mouth is challenge. We've got to think about how you shop, where you shop, right. what you buy, how you prepare it. So we'll be thinking mm -hmm. about all those things. You are going to get $60 okay. to make dinner okay. for me okay. and Ben okay. and Alistair. But it's something that you guys can use to showcase all of your knowledge. Okay. So that's, I think, the best piece of advice I can give you is to just tie it all together. So the challenge is to have the least impact on the environment that we can with the meal, basically. Is that accurate? Okay. Yeah. You each are going to get to cast one vote. Mm -hmm. I get to cast two. <laughs> Aren't you special? It may well be that this is going to be the deciding factor. Coming up, the teams get ready to rumble in the Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is challenge. It's time for the final check-in on both teams' transportation goal of 40% reduction in their total miles. So your goal was 600 miles. Right. How'd you guys do? A total for two weeks was 550. Nice! Yeah. 50 miles less. Yeah. yeah. So you're in the last leg of your transportation challenge. At this point, you don't have to do any more reducing, but you want to see if you can sustain the level you've gotten to. Okay, so 600 miles for two weeks. Or 550. Right. Which one is it? <laughs> Do we try to keep 550 or 600? Well, since you are in a big challenge against the Falcones, <laughs> For an electric car? <laughs> Who? Hey, dude, we do I 10. Might. It might. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it might we're supposed to maintain a normal, sustainable yeah. level. Okay. 550. Okay. And just a mile away, have Team Falcone's extra transportation efforts paid off? Total 714 to 728 was 147 miles in this vehicle. But you're up about. 35 percent from yeah. where you were when you went when you made your major reduction so whatever you guys did from the 14th through the 28th <laughs> you need to do that again because that was pretty epic we're down to the the last couple of weeks of this contest i mean we're really we're wrapping it up and the edisons are being really competitive right now 40 percent is great if you guys can get back up to 50 percent that's a lot better after the disappointing mileage numbers the falcones hope their air sealing totals will help balance out the equation Robert swings into action with the final home energy audit to see how Nick and Mark have done. So they've got a nice tight seal, a much better air seal. So right there, you've got good fit for the, the weather stripping on the door. And this weather stripping has all been replaced around this door. There's been some improvement, but will it be enough? It's time to do a final trash check-in with both teams. The Edisons are feeling confident. And we were styling. And then what is we that? bought hoses. What the heck is that? We bought twisty hoses at Harbor Sale oh, and they nice. came in these huge things. That's annoying. Yeah. Again, That's why? It. For hose freshness? This was, this is the drain hose for the rain barrel. Radically reduced garbage? Check. Smells now, what about Bobby food guys? waste? Yeah, I mean, that's a good week of of garbage. Tom, I don't know if this stuff. can go in there. What do you think yeah, about this? It's silk and cardboard. Wood. I think it's okay. Uh, this is our from our, our what do you call it? A vacuum cleaner. Vacuum. Vacuum. Can that go in our compost? Yeah. You think I would so? totally think so. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but over at the Falcones, Ben's worst waste fears are so coming have, true. This is food compostable. This is yeah. just food waste. Yeah. Uh, this same with the like ice it. cream container. This should be in our somebody's bag, I think. As I'm looking through here, Gosh, a little there's bit more so deeply, much recyclable stuff in here. So, Mark, so how does so how does this happen? I, I'm like, my my chin's hitting the floor because there's so much recyclable stuff in here. I, I can't even believe I did that. <clears throat> okay. And, and well, uh, yeah, I learned that that I'm I've been kind of lazy. Yeah. Really. You, you know, we really do have to actively work at making the right decisions and in some ways it does take a little bit more energy at least until you get the hang of it. As they head into the final challenge, Carrie has no doubt who the strongest member of her team is. That would be me. <laughs> Do you think you'll be the strongest member? 
physically strong. <laughs> so far, Todd has been a force to be reckoned with, but for this part of the competition, he's taking a back seat. I did all the home improvement stuff, so she has to do the cooking stuff. I might have him chop a little bit and do some <laughs> stuff, but... I've done my part. Now she needs to step up. I'm hoping it's gonna be good. I think she's gonna do a great job. I decided not to use meat because I know that's a huge carbon footprint. Outside of bread, it's difficult to get grains here. The only waste I know that I'll have is the cheese package. Their mission is clear, should they decide to accept it. Without direction from their coaches, and after giving it careful thought, both teams head straight to the farmer's market, a great place to find locally grown and produced food and goods. With so much to see, eat, and buy, it's no surprise that you can get a little sidetracked. But it is a surprise when Todd and Carrie bump into Jay Lynn. And it was super funny because the Falcones are always so nice. And I was like, you know, I'm having a really hard time finding parsley. And she's like, oh, you know, I could get parsley from a neighbor of mine and I could bring it down to you and blah, blah, blah. She's always so nice. And I'm always like, oh, no, no, no. This is a competition. There's no time for niceness. With food in hand, both teams are prepared to get creative as their coaches cheer them on. One, two, three. <laughs> and Todd sums it all up perfectly. A la cuisine. Mm, kind of. A la cuisine. A la cuisine. Coming up, on your mark, get set, cook. The teams are battling for final challenge points. I, I'm making this all up as I go. Carrie is so inspired by the put your money where your mouth is challenge that she takes the entire day off to prepare the meal. The cooking starts at 8 a.m. over at the Edison home and everyone gets into the act. Ow. <laughs> oh, my ear. Okay, so this is just bread dip with herbs and balsamic and local cheese. Nice. And then this is um, a raw beet and zucchini salad, so it hasn't been cooked at all. This is Walla Walla sweet onions from our neighbor's backyard. Oh. Very local. And then we also have down here roasted vegetables. Some of the beets came from the market. The milk that was used in the polenta is all local. Wow. And we rode our bikes to get to the market. Yeah. And the water is straight from the rain barrel. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even treated it. It's right off the it. Very good. Very good. Yeah. 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 So, so what's the most traveled thing on the table? Um, the only thing that has traveled is a lemon mm -hmm. that came from, it didn't say, it said USA, but it didn't say where from. Okay. And the olive oil. I can't think of anything that wasn't local besides the lemon and the olive oil. Did, did you make the polenta? Oh, yes, that was the one thing. The polenta yeah. was from Wisconsin. And then we picked the berries in the back and on the side of the house. The 100 foot diet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yes. backyard diet yeah. is what you could call it. Yeah. But over at the Falcones, Jay Lynn is flying by the seat of her pants. I had this whole dream the other night that I suddenly was this really creative cook. Okay, I'm carving. I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure what I'm doing though. There's a slug on my mushrooms, that's so evil. I forgot to ask you how long I massage it. Is it a 30-minute massage? So it's, uh, Do I get 60 bucks for it? Mom has her hands in the kale and she wants to know how long she has to massage it for. Until it's relaxed? Until it's relaxed. <laughs> what does that mean? Wow, that's our best one yet. Woohoo! Everyone pitches in and Mark is put on chicken patrol. 
Who tried? And I'm making this all up as I go. Whoa, that's not really good. Although Jay Lynn gave lots of thought to the meal beforehand, most of the dinner is pulled together in an hour and a half. Sweetie, I need to focus on the chicken. All right, I'm fine. I'm good Thank you. <laughs> it is my fervent hope and prayer that the squash is done. I have no idea. Major. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Look at that. Yum. This is massaged kale salad. Wow. It has golden beets. Wow. So the kale is from my friend's garden. Nice. And from our garden. Mm -hmm. So two kinds of kale. Wow. And the carrots are from our garden. And awesome. the beets are from my friend's garden. <laughs> and the oh, hazelnuts yeah. are from Linden. The chanterelle mushrooms on the top yeah. are from my friend Tim, who went and hunted them for, especially for our nice. meal. Wow. So the chanterelle mushrooms oh, kind cool. of are a theme thread throughout the meal. Nice. So then we have chicken grown in Linden marinated overnight in a whole bunch of herbs from my friend's garden. Mm -hmm. So I was at the farmer's market trying mm -hmm. to think of what I'm going to buy. And this big, huge ten-toed squash, which is like a patty pan gone crazy. Mm -hmm. So it is stuffed nice. with wheat berries mm -hmm. from the Metal Valley. Nice. And I was going to do quinoa, but local quinoa is not ripe until next month. So that was the oh. closest kind of grain I could find. <laughs> I sauteed the chanterelle mushrooms and a little bit of garlic in local butter from the same dairy where I got the cheese. So yes, literally, so like, oh. is everything local? Yes. Yeah. Everything is Everything. Local. There's not one thing that's Everything just... except the olive oil. Okay. <laughs> so was this stressful for you at all? Uh -huh. Was it? Mm -hmm. What was, was the most stressful part about it? Uh, not really knowing what I'm doing and hoping that it was good. So the, the and, um, cooking of it? The cooking. Okay. And he called me at work at about 4.30. Mm. Are, are you coming up early? The Falcones did a fabulous job of everything being local. A little bit more um, resources used for the chickens, but not like they did steak or anything. So, right. 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 and um, I don't know, the ten-toed squash was pretty darn creative. Yeah. It was. It was really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Jay Lynn obviously had quite a growth experience and, you know, kind right. of hitting the market, not having what she thought she was going to get, and then getting creative, right. asking the questions. I was really glad to hear that both yeah. families used alternative transportation yeah. to do their shopping. Yeah. They good. both are very conscious of waste. That was something I had a little bit of a concern yeah. with, yeah. but uh, they seem to do a really good job with that. But I did like the uh, the taste of the Falcone's food. I, I really did like the squash dish. Did you like the squash dish? I, I like the massaged kale salad oh, the, with the hazelnuts because I just, I just love yeah. hazelnuts. So. Yeah. Maybe and that's the decision. It's so it's small. It's to the grain. It's to the Polenta grain. Polenta. Versus wheat. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. As hard as it was to cook the meals, it's even harder to judge them. Not fair to put the coaches through this. This is a tough call. Well, I guess that's it. The decision is made. And with that, the competition is over. Now, it's time to announce the winners. After three months of tough competition, the big day dawns and both teams are feeling a little anxious. I'm nervous. I'm a little worried about my transportation log. I think we haven't done um, as effective on water usage you know, honestly, I, I could have done more, I suppose, but I just wasn't, I, I, I did everything I, I could, I think. I'm excited to hear about what happened with the dinner challenge, because I totally rocked that. This coach is a little nervous, but super proud of my team. And the Falcones are my family, and I'm definitely rooting for them. I'm excited to see what the result's going to be. We're wiped. Throughout the competition, we've tracked the teams in four different areas. The family to family challenges, overall impact reductions, the in home challenges, and the building envelope leakage challenge, or air sealing. The family to family challenges included the trivia challenge, the alternative transportation road rally, the rain barrel race, and the community green event. The results leave both teams tied. In the overall impact reductions, the teams put a lot of effort into all four areas water, energy, transportation, and waste. First of all, overall reduction in water. The winner of that challenge is the Falcones. Yay! The winning team 
managed to reduce their garbage from a weekly pickup to a monthly pickup and almost eliminated the garbage altogether. They've done such a great job of recycling. It looks like the Addis Edisons have already figured out that they were the winners. In addition, the Edisons carry the overall transportation reduction while the Falcones walk away with the overall energy reduction, which leaves the families tied yet again. The in-home challenges were a struggle for both teams. So the shower challenge. So here the goal was to get down to that five minute shower. And that challenge went to the Edison. Oh. Meanwhile, the Falcones come out on top in the in-home energy challenge. And all of Todd's hard work pays off when Team Edison runs away with the Carrie at Home challenge. But Carrie and Jay Lynn are on the edge of their seats waiting to find out who will be the top chef in the Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is challenge. The winner was the Falcone. Yeah! Woo yeah. Congratulations, Falcone. But I have got to say to both of you, both did a fabulous job. After all her hard work, Carrie's disappointed at the loss. And the teams are still tied. With all the other results in and the competition deadlocked, all that's left are the results of the building envelope leakage challenge. Since the winner in this category will also win the grand prize and drive home the Miles ZX40S, it's time to announce the overall winner of the greenest house. Part of the, uh, the fundamentals, the principles of sustainability is about the genius of and. So we have a grand prize and we have a first prize. Which one? The <laughs> first prize is actually a high efficiency furnace oh, wow. from Carrier um, and Baron Heating Green Team. And that first prize is actually going to the Falcone family. Right. The Edisons as the grand prize winners of the Greenest House competition with the Miles ZX40S AD electric sedan. Congratulations to the Edisons. After so much time spent in their crawl space, there's no denying that Team Edison dominated the air ceiling smackdown, dramatically slashing their air leakage numbers. So Todd, Carrie, where are you going now? Home. Um, Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. Next time on The Greenest House, there's one more episode left as we check in to see if our teams have been able to maintain their green habits. And it's prizes, prizes, prizes. 